God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. The Spirit of Christ said to illustrate a very important reason why many people cannot break free from all matter of sin and darkness in their lives. Because my friend, there is a false church in America. There is a multitude of people who do not know the real Jesus. And because of this, my friend, because Many pastors have gone the way of what the Bible calls Balaam. Some of them were hirelings from the very beginning of their ministries. A, a hireling is someone who works for hire. You hire them and they do the job because of the rewards. They do it because they're going to get paid. And because this is a reality in the American church, Many no longer preach the crucified Christ. Now, I want to tell you something, my friend. If you follow me in this teaching very closely, if you would give me your undivided attention, or in the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he that has an ear, let him or her hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church of America. When you are sick and you go to a doctor, to a physician, to an emergency room, the first thing that they check is what? Your blood. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And because there is a false church in the nation of America who does not have any blood. They are unable to receive deliverance, mercy, and grace to cover their confession because the false church doesn't have blood. No blood. They don't have blood. They don't have any blood. They don't preach the blood. They don't talk about the blood. They don't speak about sin. And when they do, they make light of it. If you take a person's blood out of their body, you will drop dead. And many are dead in their confessions for Jesus because they did not do the latter part of what he told us to do. He told us to repent. Now, now, when the doctor draws your blood, he's looking for H2O because you cannot live without blood, but with what's in the blood is oxygen. And when you become a true follower of Jesus Christ, my friend, you have an experience that Jesus spoke to Nicodemus in the fourth chapter of the book of John. He told him, you must be born again, Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't have a clue what Jesus was saying. My friend, if you do not understand that being a born again follower of Christ is what really gives you power to overcome because the first Adam, the Bible refers to Adam, his seed was corruptible. It was a corruptible seed. But the second Adam, who we know is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, his seed is incorruptible. I need you to follow me because that seed, which speaks to us about redemption and salvation from the time that Adam sinned to the time Jesus died on that cross. The issue was about blood. There are people who say I was born a homosexual. I can't stop sleeping with men. I was born this way. I can't stop sleeping with women. I'm a woman and I like women. 
You, they say they're born this way. I want to go there because I need you to, to, to understand, my friend, that you were very likely born that way. Just like some family lines, greed is in that family line. They were born greedy. Just like some were born alcoholics. They were born drug addicts because that curse is coming through that DNA. It's coming through that bloodline. Follow me. The first Adam, because he chose to partake, to eat that fruit, the forbidden fruit. We don't know if it was an apple or what it was the serpent had presented to Eve, but he ate it. And many people are trying to blame God saying that it's God's fault he made them that way. But my friend, I dare challenge you that it was not God that created you to be a homosexual, an alcoholic, a greedy person. It was Adam. From the time Adam sinned, you and I are now born and shaped into iniquity. The first Adam, Adam meaning red dirt, or it also means in Hebrew to make. God made Adam, but you and I were born. Follow me. Jesus Christ was born, transported through a virgin womb. The DNA, the blood of man, the mortal, the first Adam, which, which Mary, his mother, was born and shaped through the womb of her mother and carried that blood. Every human being was doomed from Adam. And God said, I cannot mix these two. That DNA, that blood is contaminated from the first Adam. I got to come in the womb of a virgin so that that blood... When he's born, I'm talking about Jesus, he was born and transported through a virgin womb, untainted, and from the time Jesus was born to the time he got to that cross, that blood is the most powerful thing in the earth, my friend, that you receive by faith. It was pure blood. It was, it was untainted. And because we have a false Jesus in America, a false church, a false Christ, false brethren who have been presented half the truth about the gospel, they are told to just believe, just make a confession. You are now saved. My friend, they left off the other part that you must repent. You must turn from your sin. Now, follow me, my friends, because the scriptures tell us, because see, remember, the false church doesn't have any blood. The false church does not speak of the blood because where the blood is, sin is, because the purpose of the blood was to cover sin. So when you are in churches and fellowships and there's no conversation about the greatest gift that was given to man, the greatest gift was the shed blood of Jesus. Follow me, my friend, because the topic here is how to break free from homosexuality, crack addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction, pride, greed. My friend, you cannot break free unless you agree with God. The scriptures tell us, follow me, my friend, follow me. The false church does not have blood because where blood is, there is oxygen and ox oxygen is pneuma, is breath. It is God's oxygen, is his breath. The spirit brings and gives life. So where the true blood of Christ is covering the lentils of the heart of true followers, my friend, this is the, the, the reality of joy and peace. That person now has the true kingdom. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the true believer, once they come to the cross, the lights are off. 
But once you make a true confession and you repent, you turn from your sin, you don't give God lip service. And let me tell you, one of the biggest deceptions, my friend, is emotionalism. Crying and getting upset does not mean you apprehended the Holy Ghost. It does not mean you have been born again because many people, they feel some kind of way about sin, but it has not produced repentance. Repentance means I've been thinking and I'm about to turn and go the other way because I do not want to trample the blood of the Christ. Follow me. When you are really born again, what Jesus was telling Nicodemus, The lights are back on. I come into your heart and now I am the truth. I am the way. I am the light of the world. I'm leading you now. I'm guiding you in truth. And where truth is, this is where the believer begins to find rest for his or her soul. Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Watch this now. And he tells us that, In the book of Matthew chapter seven, come to me and now follow me. Once you drop those burdens of sin and condemnation, because we're not built to carry guilt. Once you drop it, my friend, you it's, it's, it's on. Now you follow the light. You follow Christ. Follow me now. Once the believer has a true encounter that his conscience is woke up, the light of the conscience is open. It's it's, 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 you're, you're awake. You're regenerated. The light, the power is back on. Now I'm locked in. I'm tuned in with the Christ. I'm following his teachings. I'm following his example. I'm following the leading of the Holy spirit. God, the father is overseeing, uh, with Christ, the harvest. When there is no confession with repentance, That person is still not in agreement with God. The Bible tells us in uh, uh, Amos chapter three, verse three, how can two walk together except they agree until here's the secret. It's not even a secret, my friend, but here is the, 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 the truth of the matter for the homosexual. I'll use that one as, as, as an example. To get free, you have to agree that the scriptures clearly speak against homosexuality, that God is an abomination for a man to lay with a man. And I want you to understand, my friend, for a man to to, to place his body part inside, listen, my friend, inside of another man's rectum, you must understand how serious this is. This is perversion because the, the, the rectum was created for what reason to release waste. It's not an entrance. It's an exit. So until you agree that this is against the agreement, this is what God, my friends, he wrote this thing in the blood of Christ that I will, I will receive you back to me. If you agree. Now the scriptures say, if you confess your sin, you will prosper and receive his mercy. The Bible tells us this in Proverbs 28, 13. He said, he that com- who covers his or her sin will not prosper. The issue, my friend, is are you ready to uncover and agree? Because once I agree that Jesus died on that tree just for me, and that because of that death and, that, and the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, I am free if I agree. How do you come out of these sins, my friend? You must agree and forsake those things. That's the only way out because the way of the transgressor is hard. It will always be difficult because God said there is only one provision for sin and that's the cross. Now follow me, my friend. In order for us to have gasoline in our automobiles, we need oil. And listen, my friends, Those who are partaking in the false church, in the false church, have no oil. They have no, no momentum. They have no way to move through darkness because the Holy Spirit has not come inside of them yet. They've just made a confession, but they have not turned from sin. The ocean floor is, is filled with dead aquatic fish, 
and plants. That is where we get crude oil from. It, 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 it settles down in the ocean floor, all of these dead fish. Where do you think even the, the, the big fish that swallowed Jonah, where do you think it's at? Where do you think all these sea animals, whales and sharks and, and, and lionfish, catfish, starfish, eels, where do you think they go after they live, my friend? They die and they settle down into the ocean floor. And this is what they're drilling out of the ocean floor that we now use as crude oil, petroleum oil, so we could get momentum. It's called recycling. When you recycle a thing, it means that you convert something that's wasted. It's waste. And now you convert it to a usable material. God said, if you will come to me, if you are willing to come and repent and look at my son's death, burial, and resurrection and understand the power that's in the blood. That's why God told me to dress in this illustration so that we understand that we are dying. We are spiritually anemic because there is no preaching of the power of the blood. He wants you to go back to the blood, my friend. That is where your answer is. That is where your power is because that blood came through the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. And God is saying that in order for them to drill down in the earth and get oil that we now use to move us all about in our vehicle, God say, I will use your pain. I will use your brokenness. I will use all of those bad habitations and all those places and spaces you've been in your lifetime. God said, now I want to use it. I want to drill down in that pain, in that sin, and I want to use it. I want to convert it. And now I want to give you power to move forward in your life. But you have to agree that the blood still has power. What can wash away the sins of a man, of a woman? Nothing but the blood. It was shed, my friend. And God is saying to tell you, if you deal with homosexuality, it's okay to, to know the fact you may have been born that way because of the first Adam whose seed was corruptible. But now you must come through the cross, my friend, and allow the shed blood of the Christ to rain down, to cleanse your soul your parched soul. God say, you want the answer how to get power to overcome? Go back and look at that cross and understand my friend, that is where your power is. It's in the cross. Without blood, you cannot live. You cannot live without it. And the church of America is dying because there is no preaching of the blood. You preachers, you teachers, you exhorters that's watching me, hear me when I tell you. He's saying we must preach the blood because where the blood is preached, it can be applied to a sin sick soul. Oh, my friend. God is saying, come, 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 run, run, run. God said, you are soldiers in my army and I want to cleanse you. I want to dip you. I want to restore you. I want to get you in that space and in that place where you can come forth with your own testimony, how I saved you through the blood. There it is, my friend, the tree of life. There were two trees in that garden. The tree of life, it's the blood. You cannot live without it, my friend. Every addiction, everything going on in your life, God say, come and I will recycle it. I will use it and I will give you momentum. I will give you oxygen. You can't have blood and not have oxygen. Or if you have blood and no oxygen, you could still die. God said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with my spirit. Be filled and learn daily of the comforter. Receive the comforter. Repent. Turn from your sin. Understand that hell is our portion, my friend. From the time the first Adam sinned, God set in motion the plan of redemption, the plan of salvation. And if you, sh if you will receive it, you shall receive 
forgiveness and mercy. Use the blood. What can wash away that sin? 